Welcome, Pat. <laughs> ah, hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. You have my favorite color on. Oh, nice, eh? I saw these backgrounds on Zoom, and I thought, hmm, I'm going to look for a background that matches my top. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I thought, I'll do that. It really looks nice. Yeah, it does, <laughs> eh? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'd love to have the mountains behind me, but I don't. It's actually <laughs> summertime here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But I was just playing around with a lot of Zoom features for something to do. Sure. And they actually have quite a bit. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. Everything's interesting to me. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> it's nice to, you know, go out and try new things, you know, <laughs> instead oh, of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Whether Tigers. it's sports or whether it's um on the computer or or what it, writing or doing new things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, God's given us all of these abilities that we haven't tapped into yet. So we kind of need to move out yeah. of our comfort zones and try something new. Right. I went on uh, Facebook and uh, I had this gal, my grandson, uh, introduced me to her and said she could help me maybe start a uh, little, you know, uh, club or whatever for yeah. forever weight loss, forever weight loss, being as I kept my weight off for 36, 37 years now. And Amazing. Uh, yeah. thank you. And uh, you're, you're, you talk just like me though, I, you know, with, with your program and how you set yourself up and, and I feel, you know, like you, we have discussed before, Everybody is different. So everybody needs a plan that works for them. And you they believe right. in, they believe in. And Absolutely. so uh, yeah. So I she mm -hmm. she made up my page and oh my gosh, I hated everything that was on it. <laughs> the way oh. she set it up. Because she didn't even ask me, do you like this? Do you like that? Because I wanted my picture on there and different things. Okay. So then I don't hear from her for weeks and weeks and weeks, probably a month. And she's supposed to be helping me. And so I got mad one day and I said, I'm going to get in there and change my that picture to my picture. And I did it like just like you're saying, you know, yeah. so I don't know how hard it is to make a background. But uh, when we did um, Zoom uh, for Weight Watchers, uh, people would use the background, you know, so. it Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it looked nice. So instead of my fan going around in my head. <laughs> yeah. And there's all kinds of them. You can do nature backgrounds or you can do um, like inside house backgrounds or whatever kind of background, or you can create your own. Oh, for goodness sake. I think sense. they even allow, I think they even allow video backgrounds. I'm not sure on that. I'm sure that. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they does. do. Yeah. Yeah. It depends yeah. on what, you know, you're talking about or, you know, who you have. <laughs> right yeah so yeah. I just got a page this week I'm actually going to show it it's, it's kind of let's see, let's see if I can get that open first okay. see and I don't know how to do that either uh you know put a different page on oh let's just put that one down for a second find the one that I had where was it right there and then find you again yeah, just to show you, I think it's uh, pretty cool. They did a great job. It was with Insulin IQ. So I got my Insulin IQ coaching certificate. Uh, oh, certification wow. Just recently, prior to that. So that's with Dr. Ben Bickman. Prior to that, I had the nutrition uh, advisor through Tim Noakes, through the Nutrition Network. So I have uh -huh. that one. Mm -hmm. And of course, the food addiction reset advocate through the addiction reset mm -hmm. community right right, right. so right. anyway yeah so they did a really good job on the page i'm pretty pretty happy they with do it. they did yeah yeah, yeah. and Absolutely. then they just wanted you to show some of your lifestyle like what you do oh, so, okay right just different yeah. things yeah that was on the radio in africa that was my husband and i we went um was in alberta just for okay a, a walk somewhere uh-huh um, this is the uh, just sitting at home crocheting crocheting I like, keep, I like to keep my hands busy so that I'm not doing this kind of busy yeah yeah and and that's just a, a collage of a few things my right. actual two books some 
Nordic pole walking. When I was wow. preaching in Kenya one time, that's another one. When I was speaking to a bunch of kids at a school, I think there was 500 in that room. It was packed. Oh my gosh. Just, they oh just sit on the floor, just packed, but they were so good. And, yes. uh, and then that's my daughter in there. Ah, oh. when, it, so this is at a heavier weight. That's at a heavier weight. You know? Okay. Uh -huh. So it's, it's kind of a bit, that is a little bit heavier, but yeah. And then uh -huh. here that's for the deaf. Oh, so okay. That means love you, you know, oh, like for you goodness say sense. to somebody, love you, love you yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Right. That kind yeah. of thing. So that's what that means. It's a casual love you. And then they went and they've got the links for those that want concierge oh, services. Sense. So I do one-on-one okay. -on -one with the addiction reset community. And oh, then okay. there's also the course, which several people that take this, that come in the kingdom way have taken this course. Right. And I saw that advertised we... somewhere right. yeah, with you. Yeah. And, um, and then to send messages and I believe there's a couple more going to um, the Facebook group. So mm -hmm. there's a Facebook group. And maybe because you're interested in Facebook, maybe we'll even look at that. And then, of course, my channel mm -hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So can you see the Facebook group? Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So right. me at a heavier weight. That oh, wasn't okay. my heaviest. That oh, wasn't okay. my heaviest. I think that's only around maybe 240, 250, maybe something like that. Wow. And then this one, and then me walking, the more current one. Uh -huh. And then I just post some things in there, like right. the videos that get done and stuff like that. Exactly, exactly. But about. see, your page is, is much better. She only gave me two two things on my page. Of, uh, food as a background. And then uh, I don't even know what this... Uh, insignia was she that put in besides my picture, but I I didn't like it at all. I didn't even know what it was. And uh, but you see, you have several things, which is nice, the way that's set up. Yeah, it's just well, my slogan, which is healing with meat and Jesus. Right, right. And I put in a. I wanted to have a picture of me. I could not find any really big pictures because you know what happens. You avoid the camera. Oh, yeah. And I do have a before picture of myself. Huh. Okay. Yeah, before and after yeah. is always nice for people to see. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. didn't really have that. That was about the biggest I could find. Mind you, I still have two big boxes. If I ever get them out, they're stored. <laughs> and if I go through all the pictures in those boxes, maybe there's something in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't right, know. Right, right. Yeah. Right. That's great. And well, then you just really had a career, I'll tell you. It's amazing, Kathy. Lots of different things. I've done a, lots of things. Right. And I'm just grateful for all of it. And then I do the, the weekly show Wednesday mornings at 10 on mm -hmm. YouTube. So I always post that one there. Right. And just some different things. That's Joan. That was her very first time that she spoke. Well, I don't know it was the very first time, but one of the first times. And she spoke at a church, Joan Ifflett. Mm. So mm. that was interesting. And then, of course, this is um, right. one, of the, one of the kingdom ways. Right. Let me stop sh sharing right. that one. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. You know, and we're never too, never too old to learn. Right. I feel that way, too. I feel that right? way, too. And I'm so thankful for God uh, that uh, with my... Uh, amount of education and all I always put myself down <laughs> with my amount of education uh you know I had about three to four hundred people on a Saturday come to Weight Watchers and yeah. uh it's it was it just amazed me after a while after you know being there many years and people uh give you a uh they come back to you you know what I mean they might quit but they come back and different right. things like that and I really was uh amazed uh, that uh, the support I got from everybody, just like you are getting it, okay? But yeah. you know, to do what you would do, oh my gosh, that would blow my mind. I could never. But you know. isn't that the thing? We're all unique. We're all we're yes. all specialists. Yes. yes, we're specialists. Each one of yes. us in a different area. Right. And mine is sort of a combination area. Sure. So in the food, in the addictions, right? Um, some with in culture and whatever, and of course mm -hmm. faith. Yes. So it's a, a combination and yours and 
because I've gone the keto carnivore route for my mm -hmm. own metabolism and right. you've gone with Weight Watchers and their plan, which was mm -hmm. excellent. It worked for me. I lost over a hundred pounds where yes. I lost it is yeah. when I lost a hundred pounds. Right. And I and think then I thought now I can eat. Exactly. <laughs> no. no, it doesn't work like that. I realized that. So I became a lifetime member there after okay. losing a hundred pounds. Okay. And then I thought, oh, I'm free. Now I can eat. I don't know what I was thinking. A lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. Apparently, that's what yes. keeps them in business. <laughs> right. People right. like me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to, um, I just had to take longer to learn than you. Yeah, yeah. But And, uh, well, I only, I, I only had to lose 36 pounds. Uh, and, and, but I did it. Okay. And it took me a long time, like I said, but I think, um, what happened was with my meetings. Okay. I had people like yourself. Okay. That would come in and I would get them to go. And so when you have that, um, uh, connection with so right. many people, that is what bring brought them in for me. Yes. Okay. Cause, cause like you, like you, I would take, and I would really help them individually in fact okay yes uh, yep. with the program and because it can't the, even the Weight Watcher program it can be done in different ways mm -hmm. to, to, for people to be successful as you as you always yep. say also to you know we know that and yep. so me categorizing the people okay categorizing the people from what they're telling me made me successful in uh, lots of people, you know, getting to go and me getting awards to tell you the truth, which made yeah. me work even harder. Isn't it something? And you too, you too. Yeah. You work even harder because you see the success of other people. And that really is what you feed off. That's of. inspiring, but, isn't it? Yes. Yes. To see other people succeed. Yes. I mean, that that's what you want. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you and know, I have several members so who lost much. hope. Yeah. Pardon? Oof. You've learned so many tools, so many things along the way that you can use to help other people. Yes, and yes, and that was through God. I know that. Uh, Absolutely. Because that's naturally not my personality with everything. You know what I mean? But with this, it was. It was. Like yep. you say, a gift. It was a gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it is. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. He says that the older woman should teach the younger women now that doesn't necessarily mean older in age mm -hmm. but older in experience right right so when you've right. had the experience you know anyone that's listening even if you've had an experience in some area and you've been able right. to overcome that area whatever it right. is then right. you're equipped to help someone else overcome their that yeah. area in their lives yeah whether it's yeah. you know grief or 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 whether it's you know driving right. a car it yeah, doesn't matter exactly. what it is. Exactly. Yeah. And I had a 16-year-old uh, years ago. I had a 16-year-old. She's 30-some years old now. 16-year-old come with her mother. And she had to lose over 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. And she did it. And she was in People Magazine. Can you believe it? They <laughs> pictured her in People Magazine with her story. It was so you know, enlightening to, you know, have somebody like that that went to People Magazine. <laughs> I was too. I was 16 at the time, I think. Maybe okay. 15 okay. at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then by the time I was 17, I had gained it all back. Ah, uh, but that's, <laughs> like I said, I've heard of that. And then people have lost it again, you know, and some people struggle, oh, yeah. like, lose half yeah. of it. But still, it's a success. I don't know how you feel about that. Anything is a success if you uh, are happy with yourself, um, your health is good, uh, you know, different things like that. Um, That's right. The scale is not the only marker. Yes, yes. Your health is the marker, how you're feeling about yourself, how you feel in your own skin, how, mm -hmm. how your mental health is doing. Everything else is mm -hmm. also a marker. And right. if you go through a time where you've maybe lost and then regained, if you've learned something in that time, that too is is a win. That's a You're win. Right. You learn right. something. Right. right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Success is at different levels uh, for different people also, I guess. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, I always go back to like an infant. 
and an infant when they're learning to walk or whatever. The success is one step to start with. So That's like, oh, true. Look, the baby took one step. Look at that. Look at that. And everybody's all excited, right? And right. then you get the community, right? Community is the opposite of addiction, you were saying. Basically, that's what we were saying before. But the baby needs community too. The baby needs someone there that's going to coach them and say, come on, come on, wow. come on. One more, one more, just one more step, right? And that's basically what we're doing. One more step right? to whatever it is. So now that's you're true. taking another step. That's you're true. You're starting a group, Facebook. This is a new step. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, to yeah. support people. I mean, I assume Weight Watchers is still around. Yeah. It's got to yeah, be. Yeah, it is. is. It? it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's many people that still need support. And even if they're not in there, they mm -hmm. still need that support. And to, and you've got it. Yeah. You figured I've experience, it out. I have the experience. And um, with the program, they're teaching now it's altogether different and I'm sure it works for some people, but I have um, kind of um, based my success with people with um, the good health guidelines that I always call and tell you okay about and it's a it's it's more of a calorie counting with points uh, and uh, it'll keep you lower uh, like 12 from 1200 to 14 calories a day uh, for losing weight. Okay. okay. And uh, it's it fitting in these certain foods. That's my right. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, so. and that's usually my issue <laughs> is that when I go down to, you know, 12 to 1400 calories a day, I'm hungry. Oh, okay. Like, I want some food. Okay. So, okay. Even even today, I'd had a few days that I had eaten, you know, probably uh -huh. between 12 and 14, probably 14, 50, maybe. Right. And then today I thought I need some meat, like I'd had fish and I, I liked it. It was good. That's what I wanted that day. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, I had those kind of things. But then today I thought I just need some real meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed a pound of uh, ground beef. That's mm -hmm. what I had today. Okay. Ground beef. Yeah, it yeah. works. It works, right? Whatever. But I and think I think that that's good. I think that we need to be somewhat flexible, and they do that with Weight Watchers too, right? You get some extra oh, yeah. points at some point, right? Right. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not always exactly the same. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There's a flexibility in there, right? There's a flexibility. Yeah. 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 Directions yeah. for that and everything, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, basically. Uh, uh, it's, it's just a, a good health guidelines. That's all. So mm -hmm. it, it works for some people. doesn't work for other people. You know, it's just, just like any program That's whatsoever, right. you know, there's, and if it's not working well, then you'll troubleshoot with them to see, okay, let's talk about this. Yes. Yes. You know, what can, yeah. what can we do? What can be changed? And I said, do you let them uh, show you their food plans or like what they've yes. actually eaten? See, that's track. an important thing. Yeah. That's an important yes. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because tracking that's really almost, helpful. Yes, tracking is the key for my program. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, me too. I, I have to track. Oh, do you? Because if okay. I, I do track. Um, a lot of people who are carnivore do not track. That's what I, I track. thought. Yeah, they don't. But I do. First of all, I like to. Secondly, I can see where I'm at. Like If I'm doing really, really well, I might just track periodically. But if I've been kind of it's just yeah. not nothing's happening yeah. for me let me mm -hmm. just see you know where i'm at and then i'll use um carb manager or chronometer either one of those i believe that weight watchers has their own maybe and what is that oh they're just apps that you can track oh in. apps yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. now weight watchers uses their own do they yes their they own. do but i have yeah. a free a free app that practically everybody can go on uh it's called healthy h-e-a-l-t-h-i a nurse gave the that idea and it has different mm -hmm. different programs on it but why the question they ask you for tracking okay so you can go on to bites which is the weight watchers is points but they call it bites mm -hmm. and then there's the calorie counting it's alone you know and a couple other ones that um 
uh, if you'd answer the question, maybe uh, carnivores on there. I'm not positive about that, but uh, a couple that are on there. And uh, for just the tracking, it is free. But if you want to get into everything else, like recipes and different things like that, right, right. then they do charge you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Now, keto pretty much is carnivore, except for oh, some okay. added right? Some add a few vegetables as well, which is okay. what I was doing. I was doing keto, but what I found is that I would buy some vegetables at the beginning of the week. And by the end of the week, I was throwing them out week oh, yeah. after week after week. Yeah. And I thought, well, why am I even buying them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I go to like a fancy restaurant with my husband or something like that, and there's a few vegetables there, like zucchini or some sort of low carbohydrate type of vegetable, I, I just eat it. I don't even bother questioning i don't mm -hmm. have any sort of autoimmune issue or mm -hmm. digestive issue so it's not like i can't have it mm -hmm. i just can't be bothered right 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 <laughs> i like the and simplicity again, it's right? what works for you right there again, exactly for you yeah mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. whereas there are some people who are carnivore who absolutely cannot have it due to digestive issues oh. or, due, or due to autoimmune issues that's true. So, yeah. Right? That so would be true. everyone's different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I like it that we have the opportunity to discover. You know, that's the slogan for Ontario where I live. Okay. Yours to discover. Well, this is what it is for our life. Yours to discover. For your food plan, yours to discover. Mm -hmm. For your movement plan, yours to discover. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 For your entire life. Yeah. Like you're saying. For your entire life. Okay. And it's not the same. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So what worked for me when I was 16 doesn't necessarily work at 66. Right. Right. True. Right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, my exercise level is way different than what yeah. it was. <laughs> now, there are some people my age that are just super fit and just keep doing and doing. But yeah, apparently I'm not that person. Yeah, yeah. Not. Yeah, I taught uh, taught aerobics at one time. I, I was into dancing a lot. Um, I was a dancer. And um, okay. so yeah. I got into aerobics and was aerobic teacher also. And uh, but with the high insurance, I wasn't and I had to make money. <laughs> so I wasn't making much money. So I went into right. uh, speaking, you know, and uh, it, it yeah. really uh, did help me out. Uh, it rounded out yeah. my personality, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great experience. It, it really is. And um, I did some liturgical dancing ah. with a little dance team. So it was a lot of Jewish dancing okay. and stuff like that. And we would go oh, around yeah. like to yeah. churches and do really? some dancing. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So that was fun. I enjoyed that. And using flags and using um, silks and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I still have my flags and silks. <laughs> not my first set it's a second set right and uh, i have a course to teach on that just <laughs> haven't been doing that recently i right. think it's something that i was really popular in the church churches that i was in right right but it's just not so popular anymore no for whatever I reason i know yeah yeah yeah. yeah, I used to have a Sunday school teacher when I was a child that we put on shows, uh, you know, not during church, of course, but after, you know, that people could come to and we put right. on shows and everything as children, you know what I mean? And that was a lot yeah. of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yep. yep. So you've got some new things happening, which is exciting to see. Yeah, let's let's kind of get to um, okay. the kingdom way. Yeah. And we'll talk about it as we go, as we always do. Okay. And we're in chapter six. You know, if anyone's following along with the book or whatever, it doesn't follow exactly because I'm using a leader's guide. And the book that's on Amazon is more of a workbook. So we're looking at Aaron and Farrell. So this chapter, chapter six, basically... Um, Exodus 7, it speaks of a spiritual awakening. So it's a revelation of alignment of Pharaoh. So Pharaoh representing your mind to the prophet, your heart. It's an alignment of Pharaoh mind because oftentimes, oftentimes they're not aligned, right? 
we're thinking right. one thing, but it's not really the heart of God. Right. The prophetic heart that's speaking. So it's an alignment of Pharaoh, the mind, with your heart as one in love. Who is love? God is love. So mm -hmm. that's God's greatest desire that we would become one, starting with one within ourselves. How can we be one with each other as Jesus wants us to be if we can't even be one with ourselves? So connecting that heart, that prophetic voice with the mind. So we have to become with one within and unity begins in the kingdom of our hearts. Now let's look at the plagues and how they relate to each one of us. These are common experiences that everybody goes through at some point in their life. We were talking earlier about how we conquer things. We get through things. Yeah. So in this Exodus story, we see Aaron's rod become a serpent and swallow up the magician's rods. All the scripture has multi-dimensional interpretation. Yes, it's a historical book. Yes, it's a future book. Yes, it's a present now life application book. So all scripture um, is has many, many facets to it. The historical accounts, future revelation, and present truth application. So here we have Aaron's rod that represents the authority of the voice of God within your heart. This prophetic voice takes authority over all other self, sin, Satan's voices, and it swallows them up whole, just like Aaron's rod did to the magician's serpents. The true voice, God's prophetic voice, strips the enemy of his authority. And that's what we're doing in this teaching. We're stripping the enemy of his authority because too often we've believed a lie. And when we, when we believe a lie, then we are giving the enemy authority. So we're using the authority given to us through Jesus' blood and his gift to us, the Holy Spirit, the prophetic voice to swallow up all the other voices that we've paid attention to. We're declaring the authority of truth and stripping the enemy of any perceived power that we've allowed him to do in our lives. So Exodus is a shadow under the old covenant of the resurrection in the new covenant. Romans 7, 6 says, But now, by dying to once what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit. Let me just kind of get this down a bit. First, First Corinthians 15, 21. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, I think someone's at my door. Ah. Let me just check. It usually happens while I'm on a call. Nope. It's just a cat. Ah. Must be doing something. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's all right. So. Yeah. So, so you see, just as death, came into the world through a man. Now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man, right? Death came in through Adam and then through the, the second Adam or Jesus is where life came. First Corinthians 15, 21. Romans 8. Romans 8 is a fantastic, just shows the new creations. Fantastic chapter. So here's an excerpt. But I, I do suggest that people would read the whole chapter. Consequently, there is now no condemnation, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what was impossible for the law to do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and concerning sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the requirement of the law would be fulfilled in us. You do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who are living according to the flesh are intent on the things of the flesh. But those who are living according to the spirit are intent on the things of the spirit. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. 
because the mindset of the flesh is enmity towards God. For it is not subjected to the law of God, for it is not able to do so. And those who are in the flesh are not able to please God. So what God's saying here is to walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. He says, but you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit when you're born again. So moving from, say, Romans chapter 6, you see the carnal man. Moving into chapter 8, you see the new creation in Christ. So if indeed the spirit of God lives in you, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you, but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, this person does not belong to him. That's Romans 8, verses 1 to 9. And sometimes we forget that. Right. And we're still on this one. So that polluted river, it brings death to the fish. The river of life flow in us will not bring forth souls for the kingdom if it's polluted. And that's our ultimate calling is to bring souls into the, the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But we pollute it with walking in the flesh. Feeding our minds with lies and evil thoughts pollutes our rivers, lifeless waters. The polluted water was undrinkable. There was a tremendous thirst in the land and nothing could satisfy them from Pharaoh's kingdom. The water of the word is unavailable to us due to the mental or physical depletion. It's dry. We thirst for living water, but we can't find it. Psalm 63 says, we hunger and thirst after righteousness with an unquenchable thirst that only God can satisfy. Therefore, we must seek God first and his righteousness. Any other way is a back door that doesn't give life eternal or life abundant. Philippians 4.8. Finally, brother, brothers or sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Mm -hmm. See, this is what we were doing earlier. We're talking about our wins right. rather than focusing on, oh, I don't have this or I don't have that or comparing ourselves to other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have yes. to look at what God's given us. And right. there is within us this well of living water and we want it to spring forth that well of living water to other people so that we affect their lives for the kingdom of God. Wow. But we can't let that water become polluted. Mm -hmm. And it becomes polluted by what we allow into our thoughts. Because our thoughts will become our emotions, become our actions, and finally becomes our, our habits, our character, mm -hmm. and our destiny. Right. So so important that not we don't just guard our thoughts we guard our hearts and what we allow in wow this sure. chapter i wrote while i was on the plane coming back from kenya one time after speaking there so this is plague number two the frogs from exodus 8 verse 1 the swarm with frogs is symbolic of the jumping of our thoughts from truth to lies, truth to lies, lies to truth, faith to fear, fear to faith. So God's thoughts to self, to sin, to Satan, and then back again. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. It's proven, it's been proven scientifically that a man cannot think on two things at exactly the same time. Yeah. So what happens, they actually vacillate from one to the other rapidly, from one thought to the other thought, and back again. And this is what happens with an unstable mind. Just like the jumping frogs, they jump from selfish desires lust or evil thoughts to God and back again. This man is unstable in all his ways, according to James 1, verses 6 to 8. But the Lord desires that we will no longer be immature children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind, every new teaching, every new diet, 
right? <laughs> every, right? Every new thing that's out there, yeah. oh, it's this, that, or the other. No, the word of God is true. It's yes and amen. The other things that are out there, you know, <laughs> take them to the Lord. So we right. will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever. They sound like the truth. Mm -hmm. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Ephesians 4, 14 to 16. And you know, when God talks about you know, jealousy and envy, those kind of things. Oftentimes people can become jealous or envious of someone else and their calling or what they do. But no, God has called them to a special place, the body of Christ, just as he's called each and every one listening. There is a place for that person. There is special, a uniqueness to that person. And that it's not just a uniqueness in their looks or their fingerprints or their personalities, but there's a uniqueness of your whole makeup. Everything about you is unique, which is amazing with what, 8 billion people in the world. And it every is. single one, even identical twins are unique in many mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. So True. a little earlier in this chapter in Ephesians, Paul encourages us as prisoners of the Lord, to walk worthy of our calling. Every believer has a calling, has a rank in the body of Christ, a specific set of gifts and talents. And it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's little or a lot in our eyes. Mm -hmm. It's how we use what God has given us for his glory. Because right. he sees the heart. You know, think of the woman that gave her, what, two cents. That's all she had, mm -hmm. the widow's might. Now, she was greater than somebody that gave millions when they had billions. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she gave all that she had. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter. Just use it for his glory. Everything we eat, everything we do, everything we think is to be for the glory of God. So he knows our thoughts. Well, that's a scary thing. He knows <laughs> our thoughts and he right. judges righteously. Now that, that is a comforting thing. He judges righteously. Because mm -hmm. so often we might judge someone else, which we shouldn't. Right. We haven't walked in their shoes. Right. We don't know where they're at. Only God knows their heart. But he, he judges righteously. So I, I find that comforting. Because what do I know? Right. His heart's cry is that we would love each other and become one body fit together with love through humility and gentleness. So it's really simple. Get addicted. God made us to be addicted. But get addicted to Jesus, to get addicted to truth and to love and kindness, to right. the spirit of the Lord within you, who is the source of life. Get addicted to God. The next plague, plague number three, was the gnats in Exodus uh, 8, 16, if you want to look that up. But in Matthew 23, 23 to 25, what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important Aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. Blind guides, you strain, you strain your water so that you won't accidentally swallow a gnat. But you swallow a camel. <laughs> what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full wow. of greed and self-indulgence. Self-indulgence. Matthew 23, 23 to 25. 
So what gnats are, they're bugs that eat plant life. They're tremendous irritants that destroy the crop. And we are living plants. We are the planting of the Lord, trees of righteousness, according to the word. And we're feeding off of living water. So those analogies are not said by accident in the word of God. God chose those words because they represent life. Whereas gnats will steal life. They sap the water out of the plant and they bring it to a slow death during their short three to four week lifespan. Three to four weeks is also about the time that it takes to create a new habit. <laughs> so they're attracted to water and they enter in houses through open doors or cracks. So we make an opening. See, this is where I think abstinence comes in. They make a little opening, a little bit of an allowance for something. And then all of a sudden it takes over again. So they open, they come through open doors or cracks, spiritually cracks and open doors that we allow are an invitation for spiritual gnats to come in and eat at our belief systems, mm -hmm. starting to decay it, which become, which welcomes more gnats until quickly we can be deceived. If it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. One thing I find comforting there, it says, if it were possible. Mm -hmm. That implies to me it's not possible, but I'm not right. going to test it. Right. Right? Right. I heard many people say one time, or I've heard people many times say, you know, once saved, always saved. or So that's the Calvinism side or... Our mediumism is, you know, you sin once you get flooded out of the book of life. That's the other side. And I just say, hey, I don't know the answer. But I know that if the cross is over on one side, that you're better to be closer to the cross than to try to go to the edge and see how far you can get. Ah, right, right. And usually if I say that and I'm on a stage, I'll just walk to, right to the edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One time I fell off the edge. Oh, <laughs> literally. Oh I'm my gosh. Speaking, oh my. Paying attention. But it was okay. It wasn't a high platform. It was okay. Okay. But too funny. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I've got it here at Calvinism versus Arminianism. So read the word of God for yourself. Settle it in your heart. And if there's a line where one can cross and lose salvation, just don't go near it. Right. It's a dangerous right, right. game to play. To say in your heart, well, maybe just a little sin. Maybe just a little of this treat. If you're an, an addict, just a little cocaine is not a good idea to do. Mm -hmm. Or a little heroin. Mm -hmm. Or a little alcohol. Mm -hmm. Or a little sugar. Depending right. on what your, your addiction is. Right. Just don't touch it. And don't hang around people that are touching it. Right, right. As much as you can avoid it. Right. And that's probably covered the next <laughs> paragraph. Yeah. You know, not a little pornography, a little gambling, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, you're going to open a door to a nightmare of bondage. A gnat sucks blood. Jesus says that life is in the blood. So when we pick out a doctrinal point that we would rather ignore, but continue to ignore other teachings like those against overindulgence, gluttony, and greed, then we're allowing the gnats to suck the life out of our thoughts and ultimately out of our life. So let's choose to cleave to the Lord in all things at all times and rest in him securely with a pure conscience. A pure heart for those with a those with a pure heart are blessed for they will see God. Matthew 5, 8. Hi. And I don't mean just in eternity. We'll see God operating in our lives. We'll see God operating in other people's lives because we've chosen to live a life that's that's worthy for him to operate through. You know, Matthew, yeah, go ahead. Um, in my life, uh, I'm kind of a loner in a way. And uh, so there was a lot of people at one time that could consume me. And I had to learn that, uh, and God showed me that 
And I get a feeling now. I can get a feeling. If I meet you, I can get a feeling or a look or a, a, how your tone of your voice is um, that I need to stay away from you. Right. Uh, because it will not end up well. I can't uh, fix people, for one thing, okay, uh, yeah. to try to change them. So I'm better off to pull back and, you know, um, like you say, in my heart, <laughs> say, okay, this is not for me. <laughs> this is not for right. me. I don't know if you know what I mean, but um, Absolutely. that's a big one for me to learn. Yeah. So for- and that that's really called discernment because you have the spirit of Christ within you. And so he's kind of saying to you, well, watch it. Not that one. Okay. Yes, okay. that one. So that it's, that's really, okay. it's really okay. discernment. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we need to be so aware of that, Mm -hmm. especially in the world that we live in today. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy to become deceived Mm -hmm. by someone. Right. If we don't listen to the voice, that's the voice of Aaron again within us. Okay. In our hearts. If we Mm -hmm. don't listen to that. Mm -hmm. If we let Pharaoh say, oh, come on, they're wearing a nice suit. Mm -hmm. They're trustworthy. They're a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. If you've okay. got this check in your spirit that, hey, there's something there, something mm-hmm. there, and you don't have to identify it necessarily. You just know that this is not a good situation. This is not a person to be around or whatever it is. Right. Listen to the voice of Aaron, the voice within your heart, the voice of the spirit of God. Even sure. uh, different places uh, that you yes. would go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Okay. Discernment. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of the of the Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name, perform very, very, many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, uh-huh. you who break God's laws. So what he's saying there is he wants a relationship with us. He doesn't care about the stuff that you've done. You know, it's like what you're not getting a sticker or something like that. It's like, (laughs) oh, good job. Good job. Because you speak nicely or good job because, you know, you followed the law perfectly. Mm -hmm. No, he's looking at the heart. Mm -hmm. So even someone who is on whether it's Weight Watchers or Carnivore, whatever it is, whatever kind of eating plan or whatever um, else, whatever else it is, he's looking at the heart. So if you've if you've messed up, you've fallen, you've slipped, he's right there. He's not there to judge and beat you up or anything like that. He's just right there to say, it's okay. Get back up. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Next came the fourth plague. The fourth plague is the swarm of flies. Ooh. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Oh yes. <laughs> I was in South Africa one time and they served me. How was it? Um, it was a goat's head on a plate. Oh. It didn't have didn't have flies on it, but right. it was a goat's head on a plate, literally. Oh it's like this is a delicacy and i looked at it and i said thank you and i thought i don't know what to do right i can't eat it i just i can't have these eyes looking at me and eating right. it like yeah i think if it was today i i think i probably would have handled it better and at least tried a little bit mm-hmm. i just couldn't even think about it at right. that time one time we were in a restaurant and um, years ago, like you say, and uh, the fish come out with the head on it and the eye yes. looking at me, like you said. Oh my gosh. And I love fish. I couldn't eat it. I couldn't eat yeah, it. Because the eyes are looking at you. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I mean, I've gone fishing with my dad, but you know, you cut the head off and you right. clean it and you, you take the gizzards out, you take the scales off. Like, what do you, what do you mean? You fillet right. it? Right. Isn't it funny how you never forget things like that? <laughs> oh, no. It, may, it leaves an impact, doesn't it? <laughs> right. 
And yet I would help them with cleaning the fish and, you know, getting the heads off and the whole kit and caboodle at least a little bit. Yeah. That's he did it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. the swarm of flies from Exodus 20, 8 and verse 20. So the flies carry all sorts of bacteria mm -hmm. and feast on decay and rotten flesh. So the rot, rotten flesh is our negative mindsets, complaining, mm -hmm. doubt, unbelief. They bring rottenness to our flesh and it, they attract swarms of flies to our minds that spread the decay and further infect our minds. A tranquil heart is life to the body, but passion is rottenness to the bones. Proverbs 14.30 says, so whatever affects our mind will in time affect our bodies. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 16 to 19. So this swarm of flies is likened unto the field within our mind, filled with many thoughts. The self-talk, mm -hmm. where all sin is first birthed. It involves what you allow into your mind to think about. Exposing yourself to filth and impure thoughts will rot your mind. Purity begins in the mind. So whether it's once saved, always saved, or sin a little and you'll be blotted out is insignificant. The point is that our minds need to become transformed, renewed by God. And it's only us that can allow that process to take place. It's a choice, moment by moment, thought by thought. So if a thought comes to you that's not from God, you're not responsible. However, you are responsible if you start to think on it, let it grow, and eventually let it influence you mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. So nip it in the bud as soon as the thought comes. Mm -hmm. Turn to the Lord and his truth immediately when that thought comes. That might mean excusing yourself to the bathroom to pray or just refocusing your mind. You know how those commercial jingles are? They get caught in your head and you wind up humming the silly tune all day long. Well, that's what you want. However, you get to choose the tune. Focus your mind on a worship song. Become engulfed in his presence in your heart. And the gnat or the swarm of flies here will leave you alone. It should be the swarm of flies. Anyway, think of King David. Every time he would play his harp, the tormenting spirits would leave Saul. 1 Samuel 16, 23 or 19, 23. Some of us have tormenting spirits assigned to us, but we can put them at bay by worshiping from our hearts. Play that music in your heart and the tormenting spirits can't stay. Light, and, light dispels the darkness every single time. So the enemy cannot stay in the presence of the Lord. The worship will torment him. Remember, Lucifer was the angel of worship until his fall from heaven. So it's Satan's greatest pain to hear worship from the hearts of people who are surrendered to the Lord. Mm. So the thoughts are like clouds. Thoughts come. They're here. Now we can decide, are we going to think upon that thought mm -hmm. or send it on its way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and replace it with a true thought? Right, right. Because the enemy wants to trip us up. Right. He wants to speak neg negativity to us, pull mm -hmm. us down in any way he can. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. You but know, and God... there's, a lot of... mm -hmm. Go ahead. there's a lot of people that don't believe that. It's a shame. They actually don't believe that. Um, no, they don't. And a lot of people actually worship him. I guess so. Some, some of them deliberately and some of them, they just don't know. Right, right. They just don't know. They think, oh, this is nice music. And yet the music they're listening to is music of death. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this is a great game. Let's play this game, this video game. Right. It's a game of death. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's Satan that came to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you play games, you listen to music, 
you read things, you allow within yourself the things that, that are from the death culture, which is what we live in today. Mm -hmm. Then the life of Jesus just can't shine through you. Right, 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 right. So fix our mind, fix our mind on truth, fix our mind on Jesus, keep it there. And that's where the battle is. It's in our mind. Mm -hmm. Number five, the plague against the livestock. And you can read about that in Exodus 9.1. So the livestock represents our livelihoods. That's our economic stability. Mm -hmm. Provision are all threatened by the limiting, fearful thoughts that we have in our lives. It blocks our creativity and limits our livelihoods. Often this plague is associated with fear and low, low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. What I always feared has happened to me. What I dreaded has come true. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest. Only trouble comes to me. That's what Job 3, 25, 26 says. And I know some of you might think, rich people don't worry about that. Are you kidding? They panic. They watch the stocks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. oh, my stock. It just fell. People commit the suicide mm -hmm. because their stock fell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. or whatever and i've known people that were millionaires and they lost it all so that mm -hmm. happens too sometimes sure so when we think that it's us that got us our job or led us into this fabulous career think again that's your ego that's saying i did it <laughs> that's from the soulish realm god won't share his glory with anyone we would be wise to know that it's God that has blessed us to focus on our provider and acknowledge that he is in control, right. not us. Right. Promotion comes from the Lord. So if you're employed or if you're self-employed, whatever it is, it's God that opened the door for you. And he just, just wants you to be faithful until he shifts you. Fear, lack of gratitude for his provision, grumbling and complaining are all a part of this plague against the li livestock. See, Job lost sight of God, wondered what had happened, even despaired of life. He lost everything in this world. Jesus also lost everything, even the presence of the Father on the cross. Yet Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. He never let go of his focus on his right. father's love and purpose for Jesus' life here on earth. Right. And we too have a purpose. We can be like Job and lose our focus or like Jesus and keep our calling and election sure, obediently following the leading of the Holy Spirit to wherever it is, regardless of the cost. Count the cost. Following Jesus costs you everything. For some, the cost is their life, yet they joyfully endure because they know it's all part of God's plan for their life. Now, God doesn't require that of everyone, but he does require that we would listen to his voice and do whatever he says to do. Mm -hmm. And we're going to stop at plague six and leave that for Wow, this next was week. very interesting. Very interesting. It was, uh, oh, I just did that wrong. I changed the letter instead of changing mm. the highlight. <laughs> that's what I wanted. Okay. Anyway, that's some. Um, that's what I did on the plane. I just had these thoughts come to me as I'm sitting in the plane after speaking at a conference there. And wow. I took my book and I just started writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. Wow. For the whole trip. And that's where chapter six came from. Wow. That was and very the, interesting. The other chapters were bits and pieces that I had kind of put together over time. And mm -hmm. then I just quickly put the book together. So it does have some errors in it. But I put it together because I, I was asked to, to teach it at a church. And okay. I thought, I've only got like two weeks to get this oh together. Oh, my gosh. So I'm like, are you kidding? Okay, I can do this. I can do this. Wow. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it was very good. Very, very. I enjoyed it. Yes. Good. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. Yeah. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. um, well, let me pray for you and anybody else that's listening, and then we'll, okay. we'll go. Yes. Okay. All right. Father, I thank you for Pat. I thank you, Lord, that you are continuing to lead her, that she's continuing to learn new things. I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, help her, even with this this Facebook page, that, that you would uh, help her create it so that it would be life-giving, so it would bring glory to you, and it would help many, many people. I thank you for Pat's life. I pray that you would strengthen her in her spirit, soul, and body to do all that you call her to do. And for everyone that's listening, Lord, that's struggling in any way, I ask you, Lord, that you would even now strengthen them in their hearts, show them what they need to do today and going forward, that you would empower them to walk with you, to listen to you, and that they would know the voice of Aaron, the prophetic voice, your voice within their heart, and that that would be the voice that speaks, not Pharaoh trying to control them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, amen. guys. Yep. We will see you next week, Pat. Okay. Yep. You see have you a wonderful week. week. Thanks for you being too. here. Thank you so, so. much.